trying to figure out what parts of your building thinking classrooms lessons should be kind of the preload and what parts should be up at the boards. Stay tuned and we'll talk about it. Hi, I'm Aaron Hayes and I teach math here at West Chicago Community High School. And when I'm building my lessons, I like to have shorter parts because that keeps things moving. It also, especially if we're getting up and down um, from the desks and stuff, it also helps keep my students more interested. And so I usually like having something at the desks first when I'm doing a building thinking classroom lesson. So um, I thought what I would go through and do here is talk through building um, a system or a, a lesson for systems of equations, especially when we start talking about substitution. Um, but before we get into it, obviously, all the links that we're going to be talking about down, are down below. Hit like, comment, subscribe, send it to your friends, your mother, your grandmother, whoever you need to. But we're going to go ahead and do this. So as we're moving on, so as I'm looking at what to preload, things to do as the warm-up and stuff, I'm going to go down and try to figure out this stuff is going to be skills we have. And like when I say we have, we've had them for a long time. And the board stuff is stuff that's going to be directly linking into our new concept. Okay, so what you're going to be seeing me doing here is that you'll see the, well, you'll just see it. Let's just jump on. So here's what I'm thinking. For the warm-up, I'm going to do things that kids need to solve things by substitution. We're usually coming out of graphing, so they haven't done either of these for a while. I want them to go through and I want them to simplify expressions. So just some good old order of operations. Okay, so probably like, you know, 3 times 5 minus 7, things like that probably two or three of those. And then I'm also thinking solving equations. And again, nothing too extreme because you don't want to have them push. So, I mean, I wouldn't do anything like our extensions, but um, and that's a whole different thing. But things like, you know, 2x minus 7 equals 9. You could go through and do something like 3x maybe minus 2 times x plus 1 equals 10. Things that are going to be similar that you tend to find when you're solving by substitution. But again, you're not giving them the, that context and it's just going to seem like review. So then after this, break them down into groups, have them get up on the boards. And I use, some people here in the department like to do it out on different sheets of paper so they have it right in front of them. I tend to like to have it up on the board so I can, can kind of control the pace a little bit. So here, slide number one, I want to give the groups a win. I want to have them be simple, um, especially if they haven't worked with each other before. But then this way, it's going to kind of build some momentum and there's not going to be anybody feeling really out of their element, hopefully. So like, for example, in this one, I might go like 3x minus y equals 8 and then x equals 4. So again, traditional, you probably have already done problems like this. You may even have worksheets like this. You probably even have lessons built like this that are just problems to go through and work through and do, but something like that, okay? Very simple. Oh, I'm going to take out an X. I'm going to plug in a 4. It's like what we just did. Hey, look how easy that is, okay? So, and again, notice I'm changing here. So, for example, I have X with one of the variables here, Y is over here, just again you've taught for a couple of years, you probably know that the kids try to try to find patterns real quick. And I don't want them to think about, oh, it's always going to be X, it's always going to be Y. So that'll be the first one. Slide two is going to just take it a little bit. I'm just going to give them a small push. So in this case here, I might do something where instead of just substituting in numbers, so there's the first equation, I'm going to give them something like X equals 3Y. So again, that substitution step in there, it's going to be a little bit harder because you've got two variables, but I'm just going to take out the 3y, plug it in, and away you go. Um, you can then obviously, questions you'll get, you'll probably, like in this case here, get something where kids will have y equals 3, and then you'll have to remind them to go through and put their answers in terms of, you probably have to do this on the previous one too, now that I think about it, you're going to have to go through and plug stuff in like that. Um, I would, again, like I said earlier, I would do something with the y. So my second equation might be this. Um, just want to make sure that I have a good one. So this is why I'm writing it down. So then you've got this, y equals negative 2x. 
You're going to throw that in, and you're going to have that. Now, if you want to extend this a bit, this would be a good place to put in a third problem in case groups are moving. And my students, we've done this enough knowing, like, usually the first couple are the ones that they have to get done. If they get to the third one, great. If not, I usually, when I say, okay, it's time to move on, don't worry about it. Or I'll say, hey, make sure you get at least the first two. But on the extension one that I would do, I would probably go through in here where I would probably have questions where you get fractional answers. Because that always throws people. And that's at least worth some playing around with for some people. So that part of the class is feeling comfortable with it. So if they see it later on in the unit, they're not going to totally, they can hopefully calm some of your other students down. The last slide that I'm going to go through and do is pretty much the one that's right where the lesson goal is. And you probably already know where this is going. So I would have the 2x plus 3y equals 11, or you could say 14. And now you're going to get it where you get a full-blown expression to plug in. And by this point, the kids are comfortable with this whole, I'm going to take this, take out an x and plug this in. And so this really hasn't been a problem. I would go through and do another one. And again, negatives are always a problem. So I would go ahead and, you know, don't be hesitant there. But again, notice I am plugging in here y equals x minus 3. So again, I've got one place where x is my substitution. I have another place where my y is substitution. And it, usually in groups of two or three, they're very instant, good to moving along. The one place I would extend this one would be something like this. And I'm not going to, I would do a different problem, but just so you can see what's going on. What problem do they always make mistakes on? If I had given this problem like this, right? When I plug this in here, the kids are going to forget to distribute the negative. So that would be a very good third type of extension problem. All right. After this, again, I'm going around the room this whole time, commenting on stuff, etc. And then I'm going to go through and have them go back to their seats. Okay. And so then we're just going to wrap up the content. Variety of different ways to do it. Um, I'm experimenting with you know, give them the big sheet of paper. And I've done this when I did more formal Cornell notes, but, you know, just a, you know, simply what are the important ideas? You found. And again, they're just kids who just, you know, give them, oops, give them a couple of minutes to write some of that stuff down. And again, not a big question. And the more you do it, the more easier, the easier it's going to be. Um, I would then launch into some examples of work time. And then, as I've said on other videos, we tend to come back the next day, and we've got a learning card where it's a little bit more formal. Um, I've used these both in statistics and honors levels, in both algebra 2, algebra 1. This is a little bit more formal than what you're seeing here. I have a link down below to that, so make sure you check that out so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. There's also a link in terms of um, the setup of how all the whole thing is done. So that's how I would go through and do an introductory lesson on solving by substitution. Now, if there are particular topics you want me to look through and take a look, please throw those down in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to take a look and see what I can come up with. Um, the other thing too is I have another idea over here if you want to see me walk through a different type of lesson, subscribe over here. And more importantly, obviously, hit the like button when you have a chance. So if you have any questions, let me know. Talk to you soon.